What up, y'all? It's your boy Cyrax. Um, I do have some things that I really want to clear up here. That a lot of people have a misconception about me over. Now, if you guys know, I was just over on the homie Brooklyn Menace's live stream. And there's something I'd like to clear up. Um, and it is uh, revolving around, you know, the Bender Boys records and all that. There's a big, very big misconception that people have about me. Um, regarding, you know, Bender Boys and all that shit. Now, you know, as y'all may have seen me on Brooklyn Menace's live stream, shout out to Brooklyn, what up, bro? But a lot of people seem to think that, you know, that I basically was unmanageable. And that's what the Bender Boys have told everybody, so that's what everybody's going to believe, right? But Siznak, here's what you don't understand, dude. It's not that I was unmanageable. It's that I saw right through your little fucking trap. See, you wanted to write songs for me and have me sing those songs that you write. But the truth is... That's not how a true artist works. All right. Let me tell you how a real true artist works. Somebody like myself, I am a true artist. You want to know how and why? I don't force a song to come out of me. Whenever I'm sitting down and I'm listening to an instrumental, I let the song come naturally. Because when you write a song for somebody and you tell them to sing this song, that's, that's fake. That's faking it. And you guys doing that to me, that just shows me that you guys wanted to use me to make a profit for yourselves. And I'm not about that life. When I do my music, I want the songs to come out naturally from the heart. You know, like... Like, if you tell me to sit down and write a song about something deep, that's what I'm going to do. Now, you sit there and say I was unmanageable, but that's false. It's not that I was unmanageable. It's that I will not sacrifice my artistic creativeness just to put out a song that you guys write. You say that you were trying to guide me in the right direction, but that's false. That is not what you were trying to do. You were trying to take and, you know, turn me into another mainstream robot for your guys' use, but that's not who I am. That's not what I do. When I do music, like when I first signed on the Bender Boys records a few years ago, like a, like a few months back, I signed on with the notion that I was going to be able to do my music my way and my style. You know, I had that notion I was going to be able to do that. Hold on, y'all. Give me a minute here, away. You know, I had the notion that I was going to be able to do, you know, my music and my style and how I wanted to do it. Now, see, when you compromise that, that's taking away from somebody's artistic ability. You say that my songs never would have sold. The songs I was doing back then, you think they never would have sold. But here's the truth of it. How do you know they wouldn't have sold? Unless you really gave them a chance and actually put them out there for people to see and people to listen to. Now, you were right about one thing. Nobody saw any revenue from the merchandise that you and Marty put out back then. 
None of us saw any revenue. <laughs> Yo, shout out to Ric Flair, man. Not even joking, man. Shout out to the OG Ric Flair. But, you know, and that's the thing about it. When you bring on an artist and you say they're going to be able to do their music and their style, Sisnak, you're supposed to let that person do their music and their style. Because nobody wants to be made into a corporate robot or into a moneymaker for your own benefit. That's not it. Now, like I said, there is no animosity between me and the Bender Boys or anything like that. But there is another misconception running around about me that I really wanted to clear up, which is the misconception that I stole beats to take and resell. That's not true. See, a lot of artists like myself do use instrumentals that are on YouTube. A lot of people like myself do use beats that are readily available on YouTube. It's what we do. And I'm not the only one to do it. Take a look at my best friend Ian. A.K.A. Bratley. Who you all. Who a lot of my fans know. You know he's one of my best friends. I've known the kid since he was 15. He's a really good kid. You know he's honestly one of the best fucking rappers. I've ever met in my fucking life. And you want to know something? He uses beats off of YouTube. He doesn't always go out and purchase beats. He'll use beats off of YouTube, no problem. And that's the thing. I don't claim the beats. That's not me. That's not who I am, dude. And that's a misconception that a lot of people have about me is that I sit there and I claim these beats when I do not. If you go back and look at my channels like Virus Beats, my Driftworks Beats channel, even some of the instrumentals that I first put up on this channel when I first started this channel up way back when. All those beats I created myself in FL Studios on my PC back there that you all see behind me right there. I don't steal beats to resell. I take beats and I make use of them. And I'm tired of getting this misconception that, you know, people say that I'm unmanageable, that I'm this, that I'm that. And that's not true. I am manageable. But you want to know something? I would rather answer to myself and allow myself to have that creative freedom that I want rather than sit there and be tied down to a label that wants me to record their songs in their manner. Because when you make somebody do that, it feels forced. To me, when you sit down and write a song for me and you tell me to record it in your style how you want, that feels like you're forcing it. You're forcing that person to record songs that they might not even like. And the reason why I refuse to record songs for you, Bender Boys Records, is because your songs, they just didn't appeal to me. I have to enjoy the instrumental. I have to enjoy the beat in order to actually do something. Now, yes, I collaborated with a couple of people on that one song that got made into a music video. Shout out to Brooklyn Menace for making that happen. That was fire. But, you know, other than that one song that I collabed on that I got to do my own thing on, the reason why I left... You guys didn't kick me from the label. I left on my own. Because I felt like I was being tied down. Plain and simple. And then I go into Brooklyn Menace's live stream. And you know hang out with some of the fans. And some of my newer people that are enjoying my work. And people that have been checking me out. Alright. Well, I go over there, and what do you do, Siznak? You attack me. Out of nowhere, you straight up attack me. I couldn't even get a word in edgewise. 
because you want people to believe what you perceive as the truth. But what you perceive as the truth is, in fact, a false lie. Now, like I said, I don't have no animosity towards you. I don't have any hatred towards you. I'm just speaking the actual truth about why I left and what really went down with Bender Boys Records. The reason why I left on my own accord, which you can tell people that, you know, you kicked me or whatever, that's on you. But we all know the truth. We all know that I actually left on my own accord after I fought with you guys and fought with you guys to record my shit my way. And I brought this up multiple times. I told y'all multiple times that I wanted to record my own music and my own style. But instead, what did you do? You tried to force me to record your songs in your style. You wanted me to be somebody that I'm not, and I can't do that. A true artist does not sacrifice his creative freedoms for money. A true artist does what he loves regardless of the money, regardless of what people think of him. And that's what I do. People can love me or hate my music. They can love my music. They can love me. They can hate me. I don't care. At the end of the day, I'm still going to do my music and my stuff and my style. You know, and I'm never going to change on that. Now, you can sit there and say that I was unmanageable all you want, but the truth is, is not you're full of fucking shit. You and I both know that I really left Bender Boys Records on my own accord. Now, granted, yes, leaving was the best thing I ever did for myself. Getting rid of Heather was the best thing I ever did for myself. And you want to know why? Because I'm no longer bound or restricted by law, by rule. I can create my own music and my style without feeling held down, without feeling trapped. Hey, thanks. Wait, which music video? I don't remember which music video you're talking about, dude. You have to jog my memory on that. But uh, like I said to the Bender Boys, I will not let you sit by and spill lies about me anymore. Because I'm here to put all these rumors to rest. And that's exactly what all these things that you're telling people are. They are rumors. They are false. I like that. Team guess what? Hashtag team guess what? I actually like that, Timekeeper. For once, I actually dig that. That's fire. But, you know, like I said, I'm here to put these rumors to rest. I am tired of people running around saying that I steal beats when clearly I don't. People have seen me many, many times, you know, creating instrumentals on my laptop right here. Many a times over, people have witnessed what I can do. And like I said, yes, I'll admit, I've used instrumentals off of YouTube. And a lot of my songs. There's nothing wrong with that, dude. A lot of artists use it. It's not an uncommon thing to do. A lot of artists do do that. About 95% of artists on YouTube, I can guarantee you that at one point or another, they have used instrumentals that have been put out on YouTube for free use. Now, not all of them say free use. But when you put 
an instrumental out on YouTube that says free. It don't matter whether it's a rock track like what I do or whether it's a fucking trap beat or a hip hop beat or whatever. It doesn't matter. At some point or another, an artist is going to come along and they're going to use that beat, whether you like it or not. That's just how the music works on YouTube nowadays. Like, I'm pretty sure there's people out there that have used a lot of my beats that I've made. And guess what? I'm okay with that. I'm totally okay with that because not only does that give them a chance to create their own music using my work, but it also gives me a chance to get my own work out there at the same time. I will not be held down by these rumors anymore. Now, Siznak, you can get people to believe whatever the fuck you want and think whatever you want, but you and I both know that the Bender Boys ain't nothing but a bunch of bend-over bitches like Bloody Kiki. And I'm pretty sure y'all motherfuckers suck Bloody Kiki's dick. Oh, wait, I'm sorry. Or is it the other way around? Or do you guys suck each other's dicks? Because I know that both y'all and fucking bloated are gay. So I'm pretty sure y'all suck each other's dicks at night. Just saying. And bloated, don't think I forgot about you. You sit there and say that I steal beats, that you have all this proof that I steal beats. You ain't got shit on me, homie. You want to know how you don't have anything on me? Yo, shout out to the homie Sith Lord. What's good, brother? Shout out to my boy Caleb. What's good, man? See, bloated, you like to dig up. Every bit of info that you can on somebody to attack someone for no reason at all. You've done it to me. You've done it to others in the past. Not saying that Suplex City Vlogs didn't get what he deserved. Because he did. Not going to lie. When he did what he, when he said what he said about on Jamie's passing that day, he got what he deserved. Not going to lie. But when you go around spreading rumors about me that aren't true, that's when we have a fucking problem. And that is when we have a problem, dude. See, you want to try to make me out to be this fake person. Because you can't stand the fact that you keep getting caught up in these lies about me. That are never true. Name one lie that turned out to be real. One thing that you put out about me that turned out to be true. One thing. I dare you to name one fucking thing. Because I guarantee you, you name that one thing, I guarantee you I can prove you wrong. Every fucking time, hands down verbatim. I guarantee fucking to you every damn time you speak bad about me. I could prove you wrong every motherfucking time. And you could throw all the curveball questions at me. You can say, oh, but what about this? How did you do this? What about this? Blah, 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 blah. Dude, I could prove you wrong every fucking damn time. Just like you, sis bitch. I can prove you and the bend over bitches wrong every goddamn time, all day, every fucking day, twice on Sundays. I am tired of these rumors being spread around about me that are not motherfucking true. Y'all motherfuckers want to sit there and run your mouths about me, but yet you never have the balls to back it up because you don't have the proof to back it up. I do. Everything I say I can do, I have proven time and time and time again that I actually am better than you guys. Like I said, I am proud of the label that I started. I am proud to be running War Studios. Not only in honor of my brother, 
but in honor of those artists that hold it down every motherfucking day of the week, that do their own thing, that aren't getting held back. Amen, classic. Yo, classic. Nice video about fucking um, Matt Man the other day, dude. That was funny as fuck. I can't lie, dude. That was that was classic, man. That was awesome. But let me tell you something right now, bend over bitches. If you think for a minute that I'm gonna let you stand by and spread these rumors about me, you're sadly mistaken. Like I said, love me, hate me, I don't give a shit. At the end of the day, I am an artist and I will not be held back from doing my music in my style, in my way. If I want to put out a fucking new metal album like I did today, I'm going to put out a fucking new metal album. If I want to put out a fucking metalcore album, I'll throw one out. If I want to put out a mashup album like I did with me and some of my friends, for the Legends Never Die Chester Bennington tribute album. I'll do that too. If I want to put out a dubstep album. Hey I'll put out a dubstep album. Or if I want to do classical or whatever. Point being I'm not going to be held back. I will not be held back. By a bunch of lies and a bunch of rumors that have proven to be false time and time and time again. As I said, I do my own music in my own style and I'm not going to be held back by any motherfuckers that want to change me into somebody that I'm not. That's not going to happen. Why? Because I'm better than that. See? You motherfuckers are down here. Metalcore, that's actually an interesting concept, Classic. I'll have to look into that. See, you bend over bitches are down here. You guys are still struggling to get any kind of notoriety for your music. Me, I'm way up here getting notoriety for my music gaining a fan base through my streams and doing what I got to do to build my fan base, to do the things that I love to do. Now, you can try to prove me wrong all you want, but the truth is every time you will fucking fail because all you fucking do is smoke PCP and do drugs. I'm not about that life. I don't do that shit. Why? Because I know what that shit can do. I had to watch my dad. Who was a former military personnel. Waste his life away on that shit. Somebody who served our military. As a staff sergeant. In the 82nd Airborne Division of the United States Army. For over 40 years. I've watched that man serve for as long as I've been alive. I've watched him serve and do things that most families would not have to, you know, shouldn't have to deal with. I've had to deal with deployments, with him being overseas, fighting wars, being here at home. And what did he do after he got out? Instead of honoring his country and being a man, and help my moms take care. Helping my moms take care of me. As a kid. What did he do? He ran out. And what did he do after he ran out? He started wasting his life away on drugs. Which is why me and him no longer speak. And why I have nothing to do with him. Because he's a drug addict. Just like you Siznak. Just like everybody on Bender Boys Records. Is a fucking drug addict. And you can't tell me that y'all ain't. Because I know y'all motherfuckers do that shit. I have seen you do that shit. And it's sickening. Now. 
Now, like I said, weed, I have zero issue with weed. I have friends that do it. My mom's boyfriend does it. I have no problem with it. I'm totally cool with it. I can be around it. Like, I can be around the weed and be totally normal. Like, I'm good. I've gotten contact as before. I've gotten high before. Nothing wrong with it. Granted, I don't smoke it myself, but I have gotten enough of a contact out of where, you know, I felt the effects of being high. And guess what? Nothing wrong with that. But when it comes down to doing the hard shit that you guys do, I ain't about that shit. Unlike you, I stay clean. I stay sober. I stay focused and motivated. And you want to know why? Actually, yes, I did get the munchies. I got the munchies from fucking hell after that shit. I'm not going to lie. I went through a fucking big ass bag of Doritos in less than a fucking hour. I was hungry as hell. But like I said, sis bitch and bend over bitches and bloated bitch boy Kiki. Yo, Crypt, I've been trying to get a hold of your ass, man. And, you know, and a lot of people say, ask me, oh, why don't you drink or do anything? Because I've seen what it does to my family. I've witnessed firsthand what it's done to my dad. It ruined my dad's life. Now he's constantly wasting his life away on heavy shit, on doing shit that he don't need to be doing. And it's sickening to see the man that I used to look up to, that I had respect for, wasting his life away. I've had friends that have died from doing shit. Matter of fact, another prime example. My old bandmate and best friend, Brian Hildebrand, who was the one of the vocalists for my high school band, Laced in Sickness. About four to five years ago, he passed away from a drug overdose on heavy ass drugs. And that killed me because that was one of my best friends from high school. And then a couple of years later, I lost my mentor and brother, Koda Oda, to an accidental drug overdose. And then this year, I lose one of my biggest supporters and one of my closest friends, Jamie Nicole, to a drug overdose. I've lost a lot of fucking people to drug overdoses and a lot of fucking people to shit that I shouldn't have lost them to in the first place. So believe me when I say, I refuse to do that shit. I refuse to go down that route. Which is why I stay so focused. You want to know what my drug of choice is? My music. That's my drug of choice. I'm addicted to my music. And guess what? I would rather be addicted to doing my music and what I love to do than to be addicted to that bullshit that could kill me in five fucking seconds. At least the shit I'm addicted to doesn't fucking kill me. It actually... Is therapy for me and it helps people. So, all you fucking idiots that want to run your mouths and say that the Bender Boys are telling the truth, fuck you and what you think. Because, guess what? What you think. Is wrong. It really is. Because the Bender Boys have it in their head. Oh, he got kicked from the label. 
he did this. He was unmanageable. That's fucking bullshit. It's not that I was unmanageable. It's that I refused to be held back by motherfuckers like you, Bender Boys. I refused to do your music and your style how you wanted me to do it, how you wanted me to sound. That's not me. That's not who I am. When I do my music, I do it in my sound, in my style, in my way. I don't force it. Because like I said, when I do my music, I want it to come to me naturally. I don't want it to sound forced. Because when you do a song and it's, and you force it out of you, yeah, it might sound good. But it doesn't sound as good as when it comes out naturally from yourself, from the heart. Every single song I have put out, every single song that I've released, I have not once written at all whatsoever. None of my songs are ever fucking written. They are all from the heart, on the fucking spot, done organically and naturally. Because I let it come to me. I let the music take over me and whatever comes out, comes out. And that's how I am always going to do my music, like it or not. I will not be held back by a record label anymore. Now, for those of you that would like to check out my brand new album, here is the link to my official site where you guys can go in, check out my music. I have a brand new album out called Shadowborn. I just dropped it today. It's brand new. It's actually my first, it's actually the debut of some of my new metal work. As well as a couple of tracks that aren't so new metal. They're a little bit heavier. So if y'all would like to cop those, Pick them up. And also on a side note, for those of you that don't know, when you do purchase the album Shadowborn, you will get a free downloadable wallpaper exclusively done by myself for War Studios. So you guys will get a free War Studios downloadable wallpaper for your phone, for you know your PC, your Chromebook, whatever you're on, for your iPad, you know your tablet, whatever. So be sure to pick that shit up. But like I said, for the bend over bitches. Oh yeah, it's high quality, dude. It's definitely high quality. As a matter of fact, the wallpaper that I had up earlier this morning, or not or earlier this morning, I can't remember when it was, but you guys will see it. You guys will see it on the site. But point being, to the bend over bitches and bloated fuckboy Kiki, you think I'm bowing down to you little bitches? I'm not. Yo, President Real, President Roach, head over here to the site and check it out, homie. Right there. Click the link, Roach. It's right there, dog. Click that link and check it out for yourself. I have plenty of music out. <laughs> I have a total of three albums out right now. I have Blackout, my actual original version that I intended to be put out in the very beginning. I have that, which is my dubstep album. I have... Oh, what other ones do I have out? Oh yeah, I have the Legends Never Die Memorial mashup album. And then I have my newest album. 
Obviously, y'all know Shadowborn. But as I said, I will no longer be held back. I will continue to do my music and my style. Love it or hate it. Love it or hate it, I don't care. At the end of the day, as long as I can help even one person through their tr through whatever they're going through, I've done my job. I have done my job at the end of the day if I have helped even one person. Even if it's just one person that I've helped through my music, I've done my job. Whether I get paid or not in the long run, Money will come and go, yes. But at the end of the day, I care more about helping people. Peace.